Today, the Saturn V is going to get you in Huntsville, Alabama at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. You can get your picture taken in a spacesuit, check out a real piece of the moon, see where the Saturn V family of rockets was born, have a picture with the Apollo 16 command module, check out a couple of different lunar lander models, and even see a lunar rover. From miles away, you can see the Saturn V model rocket, which is the tallest, heaviest, most powerful rocket ever built, and it was built in pieces all over the United States, which I'm going to show you today. Inside of the Davidson Center, you can walk underneath of the different rocket stages that are spread apart and suspended from the ceiling. And the first thing that catches you when you walk in are these giant F1 engines, which are the most powerful combustion engines ever built. Each one is almost 19 feet tall. Von Braun and NASA expanded upon German V2 technology to create the most powerful rockets that have ever launched anything into space. So powerful that they actually broke windows in Huntsville the first time they were tested. This gigantic first stage was constructed in New Orleans and transported by barge to Florida where it was connected to the other stages to make the finished rocket. After 2 minutes and 42 seconds, the fuel is gone and actually detached and fell back to Earth. Crash landing in the Atlantic Ocean never to be used again. You can see footage of it breaking away here from the ground and here from inside the Apollo 4. It completely fascinates me how much time, money, and energy went into these first stage sections for them to literally just wind up heaps of garbage on the bottom of the ocean. When the first stage was spent, it was time for the second stage. It had five J2 engines, which were smaller, but still incredibly powerful. This section was built in Seal Beach, California, then transported by barge through the Panama Canal all the way to Florida to be part of the assembly. After separating from the first stage, it carried the astronauts another 109 miles in six minutes and then separated and fell back to Earth. This left the third and much smaller stage powered by a single J2 engine to get the astronauts into orbit. Built in Huntington Beach, California, it was actually transported by a guppy cargo plane to Florida to be assembled. The third stage didn't fall back to Earth. Some stayed in orbit and some were even crashed into the moon as experiments to check seismic activity. The computer brains of the rocket, known as the instrument unit, were assembled in Huntsville, Alabama. Pieces were moved by boat, plane, or train to Florida, depending on the mission. Some of them are still orbiting the Earth, and a few even got crashed into the moon, too. So now we've walked down two-thirds of the rocket, and we haven't even gotten to the people yet. After receiving a final boost from the third stage, the lunar landing module headed for the moon. Built in Long Island, New York, it had to reconfigure itself in space before heading towards the moon. So this guy docked off and then flew through space. And this is the size of rocket that it required to um, slow it down and land properly. Then they're able to come out and explore. You can see a lunar rover over here. And then when they're ready to go, they got back in this vehicle that took off from the moon using this rocket over here. Now notice the differential in the size of this rocket versus this rocket. The slow down landing rocket and the takeoff rocket those rockets compared to the rockets to get off of Earth are substantially smaller. The launch escape system at the top of the rocket fell off shortly after a successful launch and was there to guide the astronauts safely back to Earth in the case of failure. Last but not least, we have the command module built in Huntsville, Alabama. This was all the space the astronauts had during their roughly week-long mission. There's no engines on this section because it basically falls back to the planet. And you can see the char marks on it from the friction with the atmosphere. Giant parachutes helped to slow it down before it crash landed into the ocean, the only part to actually return intact with the astronauts. 15 Saturn V rockets were built and 13 were launched between 1967 and 1973. Each Saturn V cost $185 million to build then, $123 billion today, and all we have left are unusable command modules and rubble at the bottom of the ocean. NASA realized in order to become sustainable, they are going to have to design a system with reusable parts, and the space shuttle system was born. But that's for another adventure. Who needs a vacation when there's so much to explore? Keep adventuring, and the science is going to get you.